Welcome to the 300 mile review of the Ninebot F2 Pro. So I have not had any problems with the exception of one on this scooter. The only problem I had was the cruise control kicking in um, about two seconds after I hit the throttle. And it's happened multiple times. I've seen other people have the same problem with theirs. Um, I'm hoping it's a firmware update issue. Other than that, I've had zero problems with it. Like I said, I mean, before you get your turn signals, they work just fine. I do wish that there was a sensor inside of it. So when you either turn the handlebars or you leaned it, it would automatically turn those off. I know some other, other scooters have that and I, I wish this one did because there's times where I find myself driving around and my turn signals are still on. I mean, most of the time it's not a big deal, but if I am driving in the bicycle lane, coming up to an intersection and don't realize it, cars are gonna think that I'm still trying to turn. Uh, I do find that having the their rear hub motor, so rear wheel drive, is a um, benefit. I feel that the scooter does have better control and stability. Um, speaking of stability, the pneumatic tires, front and rear, combined with the front shock absorber, um, that makes the ride much smoother and much more stable. But I've had zero problems with this one. I can ride one-handed, hit some minor bumps, and it just keeps going straight with no no wobble or, or loss of balance. The mileage, I can get a good 22 miles, <clears throat> and that's on sport mode. So it advertises at 34.2 miles. Um, that's if you're in perfect conditions, you know, straight, level, and you're sitting in probably eco mode, then which tops you out at nine miles per hour, then you would be able to get your 34.2. But I'm fairly confident if you put it into drive mode, which is the middle, tops you out at 16 miles per hour, you could get closer to that 30 mile mark. Uh, but you're not gonna make that 34.2 in anything above the eco mode. I've had no problems with anything else. The it has has the headlights and it's got a tail light. I drive about seven miles one way to my office and then I'm usually at about 63% and that's because I'm on sport mode. But I got about 63% battery life left on that. And then it takes about three hours to charge it back up to 100%. With that being said, if you're riding every day, which I, I basically do, I ride just about every single day. And Segway's recommendation, recommendations are to charge your battery only to 80 or 90%, between 80 and 90. That way it prolongs the life of your battery. Um, I just charge it all the way up. And if I need to buy a new battery down the road, so be it, I'll buy a new battery. But I like having the peace of mind that I've got a full battery in case I wanna go drive somewhere else and I can't because I've only got 80% of my battery life left. Uh, I do like that they've got these spaces here and because you can mount your GoPros, you can mount phone mounts, you can mount whatever else you want to mount on there. After riding this and riding the GoTrax G5, I will say I prefer the G5's deck over this one because this one is, oh, I don't know exactly how, how big it is, but I'll put that into the, over the screen. But the G5 is, is much bigger. It is actually longer. So probably about to back, back here. And then it is a good inch, maybe an inch and a half wider as well. That allows you to have better stability while you're standing on it. 
gives you more space for your feet. If you're a larger person, you got like size 12 shoes. That's a, that's a good one there. Um, this one, it gets a little cramped. I do find myself riding or leaning more towards the front, towards the handlebars, um, just cause it, it makes it a little more comfortable. On the G5, I could back off of the handlebars and have no problems and it rode very well. One aspect I really do enjoy on this one is the ease of folding it. The F2 Pro is aimed more for a commuter. It's not going to be aimed for somebody that wants to go off-roading, go out to the desert and ride around. This is a good, solid, well-built, sturdy um, commuting scooter. Uh, you don't have the off-road suspension. Uh, you don't have the off-road grippy tires. But what you do have is a very reliable, a very zippy, when I say zippy, it gets up and goes if you want it to, commuting scooter. You don't have to worry about it failing. You don't have to worry about it getting error codes. You don't have to worry about your stem being wobbly after riding it for a couple hundred miles. Um, you don't have to worry about your tires really going flat because of the, the nice technology that they use in these, these tires. Overall, this is a very nice, robust scooter. On a scale of one to 10, like a normal scale, one being like I wouldn't even look at it and 10 being I'd buy it all day long I would rate this in the seven to eights, if not a little bit higher, just because you've got the quality and the reliability and Segway will back you on the purchase of their products. Their customer service is pretty quick at responding, um, at least for me here in the United States it is. Overall, I would purchase this scooter again.